All right, today we're going to be teaching on sexual purity. Sexual purity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 4, verse 3 to 5. First Thessalonians 4, verse 3 to 5. If we can have it from verse 1, from verse 1 to New King 5. James New version. King James Version. From verse 1 to 5. Okay. If you are there, say amen. If you are not there, say wait for me. If you are okay. waiting for the media, say amen. So first Thessalonians 4, verse 1 to 5. Okay, it's on the screen now. All right. So can we read together? Ah, uh, can we read together? To please God. Verse 2. Verse 3. Verse 4. Five and final. And five, the final verse. Amen. Amen. Can we go back to verse three, please? That's my that's our line of emphasis from verse three. For this is the will of, of God, God, your sanctification. So sanctification is the will of God. Yeah. And that you should abstain from sexual immorality. I read again. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. First of all, sexual immorality remains the standard, the lifestyle of every Christian. Mm -hmm. It is a kingdom principle, it's a kingdom lifestyle. So irrespective of whatever might be trendy or what is popular, it doesn't make it the truth. That something is popular doesn't make it the truth. But when you are born to live the life that you have been called to live by God, you make the truth become popular. True. So something is popular doesn't we have on the internet a lot of things, the way people dress, the way, I mean, sexual immorality has become a trend because a lot of Christians are silent about their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. A lot of Christians are not demonstrating the life that we are called to live as Christians. He says, for this is the will of God. So in other words, there was presented unto the children of God a document, a legalized document. Mm. A will is a legalized document telling you that this is what I entailed, that you should have, you should be sanctified, and you should obtain from sexual immorality. So in other words, as a child of God, or as a believer, when you do not live a life of sexual purity, you become an irresponsible child. Mm. When you do not live a life of sexual purity, you become an irresponsible child. Because anyone, if the father gives you a will, he entrusts something to you. So if per adventure you don't fulfill what is in that document, it makes you irresponsible. And then no father gives a child a will when he's not capacitated to fulfill that will. That's true. So in other words, when he says this is the will, it means that he has given you first the capacity to walk in, functioning, sexual purity. But the truth is many of us are not living in alignment with the will of God. Mm. For this is your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. And sexual purity is not restricted to a particular gender. It is for male and female Virgins, non-virgins, singles, and married, irrespective of your status, everyone was called to live a life of purity. Amen. So what's to know about sexual purity? What's to know about sexual purity? Number one, sexual purity is not about virginity. It is the state of the art. You know, when we announce that we're going to talk about sexual purity today, everybody are like, ah, sex, ah, ah. You know, some people are virgins, and yet their heart it's not pure. Am I talking to somebody? So virginity is not about whether you've had sex or not. It's about the state of your, your heart. heart. Yeah. In Psalm 24, verse 3 to 5, Psalm 24, verse 3 to 5, the Bible said something 
they were seeking for who is going to ascend to the hill of the Lord. The Bible says something, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place. He who has what? Sorry, he, he who has what? So there are two things there. Number one, he who has a clean hand and what? A pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol or sworn deceitful, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Two things we are picking there. He said, number one, clean hands. Number two, pure heart. Clean hands is external, is hands that you can see, right? You can see your hand, you know. Then your heart, you can see your heart. So God determines for two levels of purity. Number one, clean hands. Number two, pure heart, you know. So there is the external purity where you need to now wash your hands to be clean. Wash your hands to be clean means that you tell yourself that, I'm breaking off from that relationship. Pastor was aware that you were in a very toxic relationship. And then he went to me, Pastor, and said, Pastor, I've broken off from that relationship. I'm not doing it again. The guy is gone for good. You have cleaned your hands. In the physical, Pastor can judge you and say, this is my daughter. She's, she's pure. She has cleaned her hands from that, you know. But in your heart, you are still seeking the love. I wish the guy was here to romance me. Pure heart. In the physical, in the eyes of man, it's like your hands is clean. Many a times, you know, of course, we are church people. We judge ourselves basically by looks. Oh, you see this guy. Oh, holy and sanctified. But you see, God is saying in this scripture that the people who truly can stand in his presence are those who I judge in the private lives of their, of their working with me. So it's not necessarily what you do outside. You can deceive your pastor. You can deceive me. We can all deceive ourselves, but we cannot deceive God because he sees and he knows. Am I talking to somebody? So your hands can be clean. Is your heart pure? Is your heart pure? Can people clap for you and say, ah, this one, oh, excellent girl, excellent believer. But is your heart pure? What are you longing for? Do you secretly go and masturbate? Do you secretly go and um, watch porn, you know, at a corner? But outside, they look at you and they celebrate and say, ah, he's a master singer. His heart is clean. But his heart is not pure. So purity is not about virginity. It's about the state of the heart. Yeah, because you can be a virgin and still not be pure. True. You can be a virgin doing a lot of things that people will say, I'm a virgin. They have touched. But the only thing they've not done is that they have not penetrated. Mm -hmm. But they say they are virgins because mm. the hymen is there. So mm. the hymen can be sealed, but your heart, you have done impure things. True. You know, you have, in fact, you have done so much, you have, I mean, even a man has seen your nudity, mm. but the only difference between yourself and the person who is not a virgin is that you have not been penetrated into. So that's what we're talking about. So outwardly, you can look like you are good. After all, there's a hymen, a hymen, biologically speaking, medically speaking, but your heart is not pure. You have used your body to do different kinds of things. So purity is not a state of virginity. While virgins can be pure, that doesn't mean that the fact that you're a virgin doesn't mean that you actually have a pure heart. Mm. Because there are every other things to impurity or purity. And then also, purity is not also, there are also some non-virgins that probably may have been abused or something may have happened along the line, but they are fighting at all costs to yeah. keep a pure state of heart. True. And all that purity is not also for, you know, it's not, you're not saying, ah, you know, now that I'm single, I'm going to be pure. I'm going to just be pure. By the time I have to just chase after this thing, this purity thing. The truth is, you can be pure in your singlehood, and when you get married, you can suffer immorality. Mm. So purity it does not end in your singlehood, beyond singlehood, even when you get married. What is the state of your heart? So purity is not restricted to a marital status. So whether you are single, whether you are married, unmarried, whatever be your status, you must consciously guide the will of God, which is sanctification, which is abstaining from sexual immorality. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we summarize that point by saying that purity is not what you see from the outside. Purity is what? It's invisible. 
is what people don't see. see yeah. Purity is what people don't see. Amen. Amen. Purity is what people don't see. don't see. If you like, carry beret, tie, wrap your head with beret, and wear buluku skirt, and big blouse, and carry a big Bible. That this one is holy. That is what people see. Amen. Purity is what people don't see. It is God that judges the heart. Number two, sexual purity is not a lifestyle for specific gender or marital status. We've killed that already, right? Sexual purity is not a lifestyle for specific gender or marital status. Number three. Number three. You make your body, yourself, dishonorable when you indulge in sexual purity. If you look at verse 5, if you look at 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1 to 5 in message translation, it says, one final word, friends, we ask you, urge is more like it, that you keep on doing what we told you to do to please God in a dogged religious plot, but in a living spirited dance. You know the guidelines we laid out for you from the master Jesus. God wants you to live a pure life. Keep yourselves from sexual promiscuity. Learn to appreciate, verse 5, learn to appreciate and give dignity to your body, not abusing it, as is so common among those who know nothing of God. So in other words, when you give your body to somebody, when you are not meant to, you make your body by yourself dishonorable. You abuse your body, you become a self-abuser of your body, you, 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 you run down the dignity of your body when you give your body for what it should not be for. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you make your body, you make yourself dishonorable when you get involved in sexual immorality. So it's not about, ah, somebody abused, before the person, before the person even abused you, what did you do with your body? What's the function of your body? How do you see your body? What do you use your body for? So it's saying in scripture here, in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 1 to 5, it says, keep yourself from sexual um, promiscuity. Learn to appreciate. Learn. So in other words, when I give my body for the things that are dishonorable, I do not appreciate my body. Mm. You are a self-abuser. You are a self-abuser. So learn to appreciate and give dignity to your body. So how reputable. You're not just saying, you know what, duh, I'm a reputable person. You know, I'm so dignified. Nobody talks to me anyhow. What do you do with your body? Because that's where the dignity lies. It's not about a cultural thing. It's a scriptural thing. What do you do with your body? So how well you want to attract dignity, you want to get dignified, determine, it's, it's better than what you use your body for. Ask your neighbor, what are you using your body for? Learn to appreciate and give dignity to your body, not abusing it as it's so common among those who know nothing of God. So in other words, when you misuse, when you act like you do not understand wows your body, when you act like you do not, you do not honor your body, you act like people who do not know God. You act like the common people who do not know God. So you make, you make things that are outside of God trained more than things that are inside that are supposed to be of God. So you make ungodliness trend when you use your body in a way that you shouldn't. And people begin to question, does this one even know God? Because it says when you do this, you are common among those who know nothing of God. So people who, who are fighting to keep their sexual life pure, sorry, people who are fighting to attain sexual purity, the truth is they are the ones who demonstrate a level of godliness. And let me tell you something, when you fight very well to keep your sexual purity, the truth is you become exceptional. Mm. You are not common. You are not counted as common. You don't belong to the crowd. Exceptional people demonstrate values of godliness. True. Exceptional people demonstrate godly values. So I am not trying to be among the crowd. I am saying that it doesn't matter what the crowd does, but I can still stand out mm. because I'm capacitated to do it. Praise God. Amen. Number four, God intends for purity even in the new covenant. God intends for purity even in the new covenant. Sadly, we have a generation that believes that purity is an old school term. We have a generation that believes that discipline is an old school term. You know, for example, let's look at the life of David, um, sorry, Joseph in the Bible. The Bible told us that when Potiphar's wife showed up, what did he do? 
He fled. He fled. Mm -hmm. he fled. But in our generation, when Potiphar's wife shows up, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. <laughs> you are still speaking in tongues when you see Potiphar's wife. Joseph fled. Our generation floats. We still float around seeing. The pamper. Joseph used grace to flee. We use grace to abuse the sacrifice, the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. So it is not an old school terminology. If you try true scriptures, we try as much as possible to teach from the New Testament so that uh, they will be quoting Old Testament. I don't, if you go through the New Testament, you realize that scripture kept a marry. At the time, Apostle Paul said, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He kept a marrying this thing. He kept a marrying. Why, 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 why is it that in church? It's so so sex. What are you talking about? Because sexual sin is in a class of itself. If you check through scripture, sexual sin was the only sin that had its own rating. Different, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's in a class of himself. Are you listening to me? So it is not an old school terminology. Our generation should be the one that should raise the banner of grace and say, this is why Jesus died and I live to represent him here on earth. True. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to be talking on how to overcome sexual immorality. The truth is that we are sharing this not because we are professionals in, uh, in righteousness. We are sharing it because... <laughs> This is a battle every one of us, including us. You heard my wife say something. She said, even in marriage, sexual impurity is not a respecter of gender. It's not a respecter of the fact that you are single. Some of you say, ah, by the time I get married, all this nonsense will stop. I bet you that is when the nonsense you will not enter the level. Of, the one you are doing now is BSc. <laughs> when you marry, you see sexual uh, PhD. I'm telling you, you will see it. Sure. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, because marriage so, doesn't stop attraction. <laughs> I said because marriage doesn't stop attraction to the opposite sex. So marriage doesn't, doesn't. stop attraction yeah. to the opposite sex. So even if my husband saved me as the most beautiful girl ever, the truth is they are saying all that beautiful girls are more beautiful than me. That is the truth. They come to church. They yeah. once in a while, they come and meet me after the service. I say, oh, pastor, pastor God. Have you eaten? Have you eaten? Goes fire. Oh, pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ask all the men who are married here. The, the, after they got married, the next day they started seeing beautiful ladies. I decided something was telling them that ah, I hope I did not make a mistake. I should have married Sister Carol. All, all the married men, all, all, he who is without sin amongst you, let him raise his hand now. Where is Kevin? Where are they? Raise your hand. So we are not, we are not coming to. We are not coming to castigate you. We are here to encourage ourselves. So as I'm talking to you, we are talking to ourselves. Because you see this battle? We desire that we finish this rage strong. And that our master will look at us and say, Thou faithful and just servant. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How to overcome sexual immorality. Let's read 2 Timothy 2, verse 22. 2, 2, 2, 2. 2, 2. I'm New King James. Who please. knows that sound? 2, 2. Um, Bini Burial. Amen. So, in case you want to forget this scripture, 2, 2. 2, 2. 2, 2. It's going to help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2, 2, 2. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness. This is New Testament now, again. 
faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. How to overcome sexual immorality. We're taking three points from this passage. I will run it. Number one, let's read. The Bible says, flee also youthful loss. Number one, flee. But pursue righteousness. Number two, pursue righteousness. Number three, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, define your company. Are we together? Number one, flee. Number two, pursue righteousness. Number three, define your company. Number one, flee. Number one, flee. Flee. It didn't say pets. Did not say make excuses. I think my husband has touched it a bit. It didn't say pets. It didn't say make excuses. Say flee. So even if I have to let go of that partner, even if I have to let, person said, ah, you must, you must, we must have sex, you know, and then he's trying to touch or do something, you guys go out. And you ask, you, even if I have to let go, it's flee. If I have to forget my sandals so I can be righteous or stay in a position of right standing with my father, I will flee. Until we get to a point where waiting on God is most important than waiting on a man or woman, we haven't gotten there yet. Mm. Until we get to a point where we need to fight with all that we have to say, I would rather die for the sake of righteousness. Even if I have to remain single, let me be. People have asked me questions. I remember before I got married, I met different kinds of guys. You know, um, who you are can attract different kinds of people. Both the good, bad, and ugly is not your fault. It's just that you are too fine, you are good, that you are attracting different kinds of people. That's true. But who you entertain is your responsibility. Mm. So there, there are two different things. So whilst my attraction may not be my total responsibility, but who I entertain, who I dine with, who I sit with, who I take inside my house is my responsibility. I met different kinds of people. They came to me different kinds, different. I said, but the one that looks holy on the outside, the one every day I met different. They all wanted sex. Many of the guys that came across me, they wanted, I remember one time, you know, I was to have um, something in Lagos, and then the guy that was liking me then, offered to pay my flight ticket. I just felt like it was just one of those likeness, you know. Although, I knew he had something in mind, but then I just, and then he, I mean, this guy is Christian, you know, he's very active in church and all that. And then we, we, he flew me to Lagos. On getting to Lagos, he said he was going to stay in the same hotel room with me. I'm like, where, how? We didn't have this agreement. And he said, he said, ah, that we have to, that that's why he paid for it. I said, no, it's not possible for me and you to stay in the same hotel room. We can't stay. And then he started pulling his dress. He was already in the room. I said, ah, if it's like that, I'll sleep in the reception, you know, and all that. So what am I trying to say using this instance? And that was how we quarreled, and then finally he had to leave. I didn't care if I was going to lose the friendship. I didn't care if, you know, at that point I was not going to, I was going to be manless. I didn't care if I was going to ask me for a refund or something. But then again, what was most important was that I was keeping a state of purity. What was most important was that I was willing to live, I was willing to stay on a track with God. I was willing to fulfill a will, the will of my father. So I didn't care if I was going to, and then he told me this was the end of the friendship. I didn't care. It was important. Until the values of God becomes a threat to you than the values of men you haven't started. That's true. We must come to a point where we shake and we, are, you know, we feel really bad. We, you know, we, 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 we feel in, in a very, very terrible state when we are missing out on our godly values. But if, uh, if, if what we want to accept or the attraction from the opposite sex or what we want to entertain is most important than the values of godliness that we need to demonstrate, we haven't gotten to that state yet. We are not yearning enough. Praise God. So the Bible says flee. I can imagine Joseph, I mean, with all the troubles he has had. I mean, he was, he was I mean, his, his, his brothers had done a lot already because they had a dream about him. You know, he revealed the dream to them. And, you know, he was already in a state of suffering. Only for him to get to Potiphar's house, you know. And then it was so obvious, everywhere, royalty, the royal linings, the, all the food and all that. It was enough for him to get absorbed with what was there. But remember that pursuing godliness was topmost priority than what was presented to him. He wasn't willing to bow to shortcuts. You know, shortcuts cut destinies. Yeah. 
Many times, people want to just make it go the easy way. I'm like, ah, you know what? Why can't I just go a shortcut to greatness? Shortcut. And that wasn't going to be Joseph, Joseph's encounter. The woman was offering him things. Yeah. It was easy. You know, sometimes when you're offered some things, it's very easy that when you have to wait on God. Yeah. I'm telling you, waiting on God is not so easy. And then this woman was there offering him promotion, mm. offering him things that he has not heard about in his life. Pleasure After God. all, he's offering him pleasures that mm. the world can give, not W-O-R-D. Mm. And so he was there. It was a battle of a destiny. You see, many times when you don't flee, you are not, you are not creating the path, the pattern of fulfilling the destiny that is on your head. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so he had to flee. I mean, the Bible says he left his robe, he left it, because why? When you are really running, you can leave almost everything. Yes. Because you are running for a cause. When you are really running, when you are, it's not, we're not talking of strolling. Sexual temptation, you don't stroll. Mm. You are not trying to trek. You are not looking all nice. So it's okay if you have to get worn out in the process. Mm. You are not looking all put together. It is flee. So even if I have to get injured on my leg, as long as it doesn't have any injury on my spirit, it's fine. Yeah. Even if I have to, you know, leave the clothes and get on and let people laugh at me, I'd rather be laughed at publicly than God look at me and like, my child, you mm. have mocked my name. Yeah. So it is flee. He fled. I'm sure that maybe he had bought holes in his clothes in presence of flee, but he did not care. He may as well knew that he would get into trouble because she's Potiphar's wife, but he didn't care. If you look through the scriptures very thoroughly, we just have the Bible says, and the presence of God was with him mm. always. Mm. Why? Because he was standing for a cause of righteousness. Praise God. So if you notice what we are teaching now, we're not talking about, you know, suppose someone will come and say, Pastor, you say, I'm fighting immorality. It's not fight to. It's not fight, it's flee. Are you listening? Say, Pastor, I'm fighting it. Pastor, lay on some mind. I'm Pastor will lay on some head. You go back to that room and you fall again. It's not fight. It's Jesus that is fighting our battle. The only instruction to do is he run. He didn't say fight. He's fighting for you. Amen? <laughs> he said run. Say, ha, ah. Pastor, you don't understand. Hmm. The lady here, hmm. you see, the one be fighting morality. <laughs> you better start running. <laughs> Those of you that like fight, <laughs> you better start what? Running. Number two, pursue righteousness. Pursue righteousness. Somebody say, I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility. In this kingdom, we all have responsibility. And that is what this scripture is saying. He said, pursue, be intentional. Pursue it. Hold fast. Scripture also told it, say, casting down every imagination. It did not say cast down. It's a continuous fight. You keep pursuing. You keep casting. Because temptation will always come. The devil will always find a way to want to pull you down. He will want to find a way to always distract you. But it is a continual thing of what? Pursuit. I deliberately decide to pursue righteousness. True. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Righteousness also means putting structure right that will deliver you from falling into sin. Putting the right structure, setting boundaries. I don't know why you keep going to his house to go and cook for him when you are not going to marry him. I don't know why you are cohabiting. You go to school, you live. You, we, we said it here. In, in, in your own, they see you that you have clean hands. But they don't know that your heart is impure. Because anytime you go to campus, you are cohabiting. You are cohabiting. And you are crying every day, God, I want to live. I want to be like pastor. Oh God, I admire him. I want to be like... Pursue righteousness. It's a deliberate fight that I'll put. It is not that it is popular. I know it's everywhere. People come, they laugh at you. They mock you. I've been there in my university days. They were looking at me as fool. Now look at this one. Foolish who is. He doesn't have sense. But now, 20 years after, we now know what sense. Because there is always going to be a separation. Am I talking to somebody? 
So you can be a fool but for a moment. And don't you like it that you're a fool for Christ? Hallelujah. Apostle Paul said, I, a prisoner of Christ. He loved it. Amen. So you must understand, you must what? Set boundaries. That is one way to pursue righteousness. Set boundaries. Boundaries is a fence you create around yourself that this is no no or this is my yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Boundaries means that, let's, let's go practical. Boundaries means that I don't send love emojis to ladies that are not, that I'm not in a relationship with. I don't say, you know what emoji means? Emoji means that I don't say kissing symbols. You have not kissed, but you have sent virtual kiss. So what's that the difference? Because of course you know you cannot do virtual kissing now. And when you are doing sending the virtual kiss, your mouth is moving with it. You are imagining. imagining. And you think that the kiss you have sent to the lady now, not yet happened to her body. Yes. Because it's normal. It's just, you just send sending sending the kiss. Send down the receiver. They can't laugh well because they do it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Because that is boundaries. We have seen situations where a la lady would just come and say, ah. He deceived me. He lied to me. It was because you never set boundaries. You were giving her hope. You were always accepting all the offers she was giving to you. So you must set boundaries. When do you talk? You don't like talking during the day. You wait till when it's 11 o'clock at night. Hello. Before I sleep, I just want to... I need you to open your window and look into the sky. <laughs> what do you see? Amen? <laughs> you see how you carry matches now? You are lighting fire on your bosom. Then if he catch fire now, he say, Pastor, please, I don't know. I don't, it's the enemy that is attacking me. But they don't know that you will never call during the day. It's night, you wait to be calling the sisters. Set what? Set boundaries. Set boundaries means that when you know it is normal, the Bible... It's not, is it the Bible now? <laughs> Where you have gathering of people, it is normal for feelings to start growing up. That you are in the same department, it is normal that because you now see yourself regularly, attraction will start. And many times, the fact that you are attracted to your friend doesn't mean that the person is fit for you for marriage. Mm -hmm. Proximity doesn't mean suitability. Proximity doesn't mean suitability. Yeah. So many of you want to take it to the next level because you're in the same department. You sing together. So when you sing tro 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 piano, or soprano, the guy sing tenor. And you're like, ah, we are connected. <laughs> Amen? Then all of a sudden, there's an attraction that is now coming. It is now important that you now talk to yourself and now say, I need to now set boundaries. It is very important because a lot of people have become victims of circumstances like this without being able to differentiate between friendship and intimacy. Praise the name of the Lord. You want set boundaries. And many a times when you cannot handle it in this kind of congregation, it is important you walk to your HOD or you walk to your pastor and say, Pastor, look at the situation I'm in now. I did not know how it happened. Since when Sister Kara be telling me to be carrying offering basket for her and all those stuff, I have fallen in love. So an authority has the capacity to now talk your brain out of it. That is part of what? Setting boundaries. Setting boundaries means that you do not lie to yourself. Many of you lie to yourself. Me? Yes, even if a woman naked here now, I will not be moved. Well done, Superman. <laughs> Vote wrong. Amen? <laughs> Lie to yourself. You have finished speaking in tongues for six hours. You come out. Yeah. Holy Ghost. I, I've been having dinner with Smith Wigglesworth and Ketri Kumar. If a woman come now, nothing. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Amen? It is character that saves. It's not the anointing that saves when it comes to sexual immorality. Many of the men who fell in scripture, they were anointed men. 
but it was character that messed them up. So you must tell yourself that I don't have the capacity. So that is why I set boundaries. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What has helped me thus far is boundaries. You think I'm not attracted. I don't look at people in church. I'm like, hey, look at sister. No, it's normal. Amen? Amen. But boundaries. Boundaries. What kind of conversation are you having? Is it an intimate conversation? If you come and meet me as a sister, and you say, Pastor, you see, um, I came from a relationship. They now raped me. So the girl now, I, I, hey, 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 stop, stop, stop. Don't, don't, don't continue. Go and meet my wife. If you like, laugh at me. Say, ah, this tall pastor like this, he's running from woman. I run. <laughs> Amen? There's something I'm protecting. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't lie to yourself. You do what? Set boundaries. Yeah, true. And then Bible says in Proverbs, I can't remember, is it 24 so? It says, honesty guides good people. So yeah. in other words, if you don't have strong guidelines for yourself, you become misguided. Mm. Yeah, you become misguided. So, and then don't wait on a relationship before you set boundaries. So you're not trying to get into a relationship before you know what you should be your standard, what you should do, what you should not do. Have it for yourself. Tell yourself as a single person, these will be my values. These are things I will not compromise. Yeah. Values are not negotiated. True. Values are not negotiated. It's not market. You don't price values. There's no price tag on it. So you are demonstrating it already before the person comes on board. Before myself and my husband started a relationship, I told myself that I would not sleep with any man. And then when I see that I hug and the hug is beginning to trigger something, I will stop hugging. It was that bad because I needed to model something. I told myself before I got into a relationship that I wanted to be a model to my siblings mm. first. Because it starts with the people within before you expand a generation. That's true. So I told myself intentionally I wanted to model out to my siblings. I didn't just want to cancel. I wanted to demonstrate a lifestyle. Yeah. So it's not as if I wasn't tempted in my singlehood. But I, I proposed in my heart that I would not defy myself. Mm. Daniel and his friends were in Babylon. Did not, that doesn't mean that they did not like the aroma of the food in Babylon. But the truth is they had a they proposed in their heart that they would not defy themselves. So they, at all costs they were protecting themselves. Mm. Praise God. So that's what I told myself. So even before I got into a relationship with my husband, I told myself that there are things I will not do. There are things I wouldn't do because I was trying to protect myself and I wanted to be an intentional model to my siblings. Praise God. So when my husband came on board, he already saw. In fact, we're not trying to convince ourselves. We're not saying, ah, ah the relationship will be dry yo, if we don't do this. To be dry if we don't do that. No, it wasn't dryness. We knew that if we had to be dry, for a course, we are ready to be dry. Mm. Praise God. So, in other words, when he came on board, I now told him, these are my values, and it was the same thing. We're both in alignment. Listen, when you know your values for yourself before someone comes on board, it's easy to know who you are aligned with. That's true. When you know your values first for yourself, you know your boundaries for yourself, you know, it is easy to know who you should align. You're not coming to meet pastor, wasting pastor's time. Mm. You say, ah, you don't understand. He said we should have sex before. That is not, that's not counseling. Mm. That's not something that you should, for somebody who is a believer, you are soaked in the world, that's not something you should come and present. It's not a case. Mm. Because the word of God is already there, scripted in scripture. Every role that he needs us to play at was already scripted. True. So you're not coming, you're not coming to meet your pastor to say, what should I do there? I remember one time, Valentine, you know, Valentine, we have more of these things. Valentine months, February 14, after February 15, one girl like that, she came around to meet me. She was wearing an engagement ring, 100 level. 100 level, the guy <laughs> had graduated. So I asked her, I said, the guy was in 200 level, sorry, she was in 100 level. So I said, do you want to get married? Why the engagement? He said, no, he engaged me. You know, I'm emotionally connected. In public. I said, this is your engagement. After I engaged you, why did people go to afterwards? Say, he bought me ice cream. I said, from the ice cream, what happened? He said, went to his house. I said, tell me the truth. There's something you're not telling started me. started touching me. Because after the ice cream, there was a rhythm that flew. I'm telling you. It didn't just end in ice cream. <laughs> One now happened later, and I said, eh, eh. I don't know, somehow she, she lost her virginity on Valentine's Day. Mm. Because why? The engagement ring was a shock. When we present things that are prized, overpriced, less values, mm. we missed out on things that we should, we should fulfill. Hi. So the ring was so important to her. At 100 level, imagine, no timeline for marriage. Mm. And that, listen. When you are getting into a relationship, you have a timeline in mind. That's true. Even when you enter school, the school has a year you should graduate. Yeah, timeline. 
If you enter a school, you want to study a course, and they do not present the year you should graduate, apart from ASU strike, it's a problem for mm -hmm. you. Before, even ASU strike is already frustrating people. And I'm ASU strike has timeline. I'm not ASU strike. Even if they say they will review, you're not going to review again, but Shadi has a timeline. So you cannot, this, because these are the things that bring temptation. Mm. You get into a relationship, you're on your level. Before you know the guy is not sending you, you are not saying anything, no you are direction. waiting on God. No direction. So any relationship that doesn't have direction, you too, you are misdirected on your values. Mm. So it's very important to set timelines, one of the boundaries. When myself and my husband started our relationship, he said, I am going to get married next year, but I needed to go travel out for my master, so we needed to delay. There was a timeline. So you are working towards something. Mm. Now, even if your boundaries, don't let people laugh at you and say, if you're, I met a couple, I think it was online, so I needed to have a one-on-one -on -one with them. And somebody was in, interviewing them, a very popular person, you know, on Instagram, you know. And most of us follow him. You know, when interviewing them, he said, uh, they said they, they were courting for five years. They knew that they were going to get married at their fifth year because they had a lot of um, trips to do and all that. But he said they never hugged in their relationship. I saw people's comments, you know, what people. They say, ah, now why you they lie? You they do this, you see? Many times when people are keeping it, you think they are lying mm. because you feel that, you know, it's not possible. And everybody, they are like you. Everybody, they are like you. So what, what you don't admire, you can't keep. <laughs> That's true. Because you feel that people are doing it like you, so it's not possible. Mm. And I, I was interested. So I had to go, you know, get their contact and I needed to ask questions. Why did you do this? I mean, hog, without hogs. Me, I never want to do that one, but the one was very strong. So she said, she realized she's a very emotional person. Mm. She studied herself well enough before she got involved with her husband that even a hog, side hog is something to her. Mm. So she knew that if she wasn't intentional, both of them, they were going to have sex before marriage. Mm. So I'm saying that if you have studied yourself, you know that hog is your own thing. Please don't hog. Mm. It's not about what the general do, it's what you can do, the boundaries you can create for yourself that will make you live that life of purity. So if no hog, even if it's side, you say even a side dog, we know feed one, it's fine. As long as that is what is protecting you. Boundaries protect a lifestyle. That's what it does. That's the purpose of boundary. It protects a lifestyle. So you are not negotiating with somebody. Hey, are you sure that's your dues? These are my own dues. Oh, ah, my guy is rigid. My lady is rigid. It's not about what is somebody's do or what is not. It's that you know your weakness. Study your weakness well enough because you identify your weakness that makes you set boundaries. True. So study your weakness before you meet the person. Study your weakness after you have met the person. Why did I say so? Because in being alone, there are some weaknesses you observe. In being with somebody, there are more weaknesses you can observe. Mm. So you need to study yourself before you meet the person, after you meet the person, so you can know certain specific boundaries that you should put in place so as to guide the lifestyle. Boundaries protect the lifestyle. When your house is fenced, there are prayers that are limited. That's true. Praise God. So let's run. We're still under pursuing. No, set. Um, yeah. Okay. Pursuing, pursuing righteousness. righteousness. Yes. So under it again, study the word. Study the word. Know the word for yourself. By yourself. Like my wife was saying that it's not every question you ask. We give room now for question and answer. Now you start hearing stupid questions. Stupid, stupid question. We've been having sex for three years. Now, now he has. I, I've committed abortion for three, three times now. Now I don't even know that's confused. Pastor, is this still the will of God? Foolish question because you don't know the word of God. Foolish question. Is kissing the sin? Foolish question because you don't know the word of God. Um, uh, what's that? Problem? The one your ex told you that time. <laughs> that we're, made, we're married in heaven. Uh -huh, that once you start a relationship, you are married in heaven. That heaven God has, sees uh, it already. God has endorsed the marriage already in heaven, so we can be having sex. You know, the, it's just the physical manifestation of wedding that is important. If you don't know the word of God, you will fall for those kind of a thing. So to avoid foolish questions, foolish questions, you know, so that your, your pastor can't tell you and mama can't tell you. We usually have a headache when you bring some of your, your question. Amen? We don't know how to tell you. So certain times we just smile, we just, you know, <laughs> hallelujah. In our mind is that we should carry cane and flog you. Because certain times, how can the word of God be so rich? Be so rich. And they say, ask questions. You still ask foolish questions. Ah, ah. You will both say, hey, if you hear my pastor, my pastor is loaded. Oh, God. When my pastor is preaching, eh? he's a teacher of the world. But yeah, you are doing foolish things. Foolish things. Foolish things. That 
I'm telling you now, I'm, I'm a pastor, so I can talk on behalf of your pastor. Certain times we are ashamed. There are some questions you people ask us for counseling. We say, he a male. In our heart, he a male. He. Now we teach this one, he a male. Amen. Please, don't bring shame to the body of Christ with your question. Amen. So that is why, study the word of God. Are you listening to me? You must know what the word of God says. Because even the devil knows the word. And he will come in a very subtle way and bring the word for you. Many years ago, when I was a youth pastor, I was in my that time. There was this, there was this girl, she loved me. Yeah. You see this love? She's ready to give me everything. Everything. No, with all the nothing. Everything. Because of this love, this girl posted herself to Asaba. And I was, you, you see, the way, the, the way devil arranges things, eh? he knows where to catch you. And I was not the copper's coordinator. I now went to go and pick them with church boss. So, of course, they can't sleep in church. We started giving them where to stay. People funded the, the accommodation, so we had to put them in hotels. So we told people to share rooms. All the coppers, they should share rooms. You know, so I went for pastor's meeting. So before I went back home, I said, okay, let me pay them a visit before I go. So I paid everyone a visit. I did not see this girl. I was asking, where is this girl? Where is this girl? I want to first say, I know that she said she can't stay with anybody. She had to go and pay for her own room. So she paid for her room. I said, okay, no problem. So I walked into her room, knocked, and I entered. The moment I entered, I saw this lady, she was tra on transparent 90, stark naked. She said, ah, thank you for coming. I had to pay for the room so that myself and you, we stay together. You know, I can't stay alone. Da, 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 da. As she was talking, the AC was blowing me. <laughs> it was blowing, my, 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 oh God. I was seeing things and the AC was working. It was working. I told this lady, I said, I can't do what you are offering. She grabbed me, if me had gone. She said, he said, oh, he's, what's old? Why, why, come now, free of charge? I said, I will not be able to do it. It's a sin. She said, tell me where it is in the Bible. That fornication is a sin. Tell me now. And she was talking, it was like devil that was talking to me. Tell me where it is in the Bible. My beloved brothers and sisters, under that atmosphere, I didn't even remember John 3 16. <laughs> John 3 16. I was looking for it. I said, okay, let me try to find John 11 35, the shortest scripture of Jesus' web. <laughs> My head blank. <laughs> Listen. If you do not now have values for your life, at that point, you will fall. Do you know what I told her? Sincerely, I told her, I said, I can't remember, but I know the Bible said that it is here. <laughs> but one thing I know is that I will not be able to sleep here. You know why? If I get out of this place tomorrow morning and somebody sees me, the person may not talk. This was what I was telling now. I was at the door entrance. At the door, I was telling her, I said, but years later, when I become a great man of God, when I'm preaching on TV, they will now say, when they are watching this, they will say, look, at, I slept with him now. I can't carry him. Forget him. Does he have anointing? I slept with him. That was what I was telling this girl. I never knew that years later, I will still be a great man of God. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You must know the word. You must know your value. You must see, you will protect this thing like your life depends on it. I'm telling you, some of you, you are demarcating Christianity you don't know. Some of you. People are celebrating, ah! born again Christian but, but your neighbor they vow that this one if this one is a Christian me I'll not serve God 
They are saying it because of you. You don't know. You are demarketing Christianity. Amen. Triggers. Triggers. Admit your Stay triggers. Stay under pursuing mm -hmm. righteousness. righteousness. We've dealt with that. Admit your triggers. Your triggers. Yes. And those, we've already said it. So those people who ask whether well, kissing is a sin. You know, some people say, ah, it's not categorically written in scripture. If you check through 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1, in message translation, it says, now, getting down to the questions you asked in your letter to me. First, is it a good thing to have sexual relations? So there are pathways to sexual intercourse. Kissing is one of the sexual, sexual relations. relations. You don't kiss with your, if you kiss the first day with your hands at the back, it's just the first time. Say, ah, but nothing happened. I just kissed with my hands at the back. The second time, third time, before you know it, you won't know when you're on the bed. Praise God. So, know your triggers. Know your triggers. So it's your very trigger, important. your triggers can be movies. Yeah, it can be movies. Yeah, some of you just watch movies and your head is busting. Your head is busting. So some of you like romantic songs a lot. Yes. You know, you, when you, you are listening to the song, a lot of things are playing. Some of you like blue light, blue and red light in your room. Especially boys, you pour those lights, yeah. demonic lights. When you're under that light, a lot of things is playing your head. Even if you carry a Bible to read, under that light, how will Bible enter your head? Triggers, triggers, remove it. Amen? Put bright, bright light. So that when people enter your house, they can see your face. Go and put blue light. What are you looking for? Yeah. Amen? Triggers, triggers. If we want you to shut your Facebook page, shut it down. Yeah. Because... It's, it's not old school for you not to be online. Shut it down. You are seeing things. You are seeing bum bum. Seeing a lot of it. Shut it down. It's not all comedians you will follow. There's pollution everywhere. If they are told me my widest dream that comedy, there will be porn comedy, I will never believe. So but look at it now. It's rampant everywhere. You cannot just scroll through Facebook page now without seeing Instagram, without seeing sex exposed everywhere. So we have battles. If it involves you leaving social media, leave to protect yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you must know your trigger. Yes. And then what are the list of songs in your playlist? What are the list of songs in your playlist? Yeah. If the list of songs you have plays with your flesh alone, that's not a playlist. Like me, when, only, I was I mean, single, when I was single. When I was single that time, songs, all these uh, romantic songs, they used to trigger me, you know? Of when I listen to it like this, I, Oh baby, I wish you hold me from behind. Then all of a sudden, as a man of God, I'm not looking for a baby I want to hold from behind. It's true. You will not know. You, you, the word may be your head, and you are preaching. Your hand is like this. People say, "Oh, my pastor's hand is a hand of fire," but they don't know that is the song you listen to. You want to hold something. It's true. All I want is your waist. It's all your I want waist, yes. is your waist. Amen. Amen? Amen? Then you finish singing it, it's recorded in your head. Then it's a the choir say, lift up all your hands. Begin on, just sing a song in your heart. Then in your heart, the only thing that all I want is your waist. Whether it's God waste you want now, or angel waste, we don't know. All I want is your waste. Even everyone, they are even confused. What is this one saying? All I want is your waist. Amen? Because of what you have been listening to. It's true. Casting down every imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge mm. of God. Mm. It is a warfare. It is a warfare, yeah. When I got married to my wife, my wife was asking, which song do you know? I did not know any song. Me, secular. I could not know any song because I needed to protect myself. Some of you, you listen to secular songs. Mm, you are strong. Uh, people like us, we know what we are battling. Amen? So what you play stirs up lustful desires or stirs up your spirit. So you must set the right atmosphere. Sexual purity depends on an atmosphere. Sexual immorality is dependent on an atmosphere. So you must set your atmosphere right. There's a way you listen to songs and you begin to speak in the Holy Ghost. There's a kind of atmosphere you create in your room. There are also songs, that's what my husband is saying, that you listen to and begin to pollute your atmosphere. True. So sexual purity is atmosphere dependent. Sexual mm. immorality is atmosphere dependent. What songs are you listening to that is creating an atmosphere? Praise the Praise Lord. God. Number three, the last now, define your... Company. Define your company. Second Timothy 2, 2, 2. Let's have that. 
our scripture. It's a run away from New King James. New King James. It's a flee youthful loss. We've talked about that flee, but pursue righteousness three, faith, love, peace. With what? With those, With those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So there are people even in the church who call on the Lord, but not with a pure heart. Are you listening? True. There are people in the body of Christ as well too, who call on the Lord, but not with a pure heart. So yeah. scripture is saying that if you want to sustain this level of righteousness, your association matters. matters. True. Your company matters. Yeah. Who is your friend? I will tell you who you are. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. First Corinthians 15 verse 33 First Corinthians 15 verse 33 said, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company corrupts good habits. Praise the name of the Lord. So what this scripture is saying that there is possibility that you built good habits. You built, I, I, my, sometimes when I discuss with my friends, I usually tell them, I said, we, usually, we agreed that many of the men of God who are fake today, they actually were not fake from the beginning. They had real fire. But unfortunately, association. So there is already a good habit, but evil company can corrupt it. Yeah. Evil company. So what you are guiding is your good habit. A lot of us, when we were home, we were righteous. The moment we left home to school, good habit got corrupted because of what? Association. So good company can make your association grow. Your habit, sorry, your habit grow. Good association can make your habit grow. Who are your friends? Do they challenge you to pray? Mm. Do they challenge you to study the world? Mm. Or all what they talk about is boy, girl, woman, play, wedding, marriage. What do they tell you about? What is their drive? What is their hunger? That will determine how long or how much you will fly. Sure. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So who are your companies? Who is influencing you? You know, influence comes from the word influence, flu, flu, flu. The truth is that if somebody is sneezing and you stay too long with the person, you will contact that flu. Yeah. That is where influence comes from. So you cannot stay with somebody for a long as I mean, all my friends are bad people. It's just I'm the only person that is good amongst my friends. <laughs> and we are coping. No, you're already contacting flu. With time, you will be influenced. True. So who are what? Your friends. True. So in other words, I mean, just like my husband said, if you look at first, um, Second Samuel 13, verse 1 to 5, Ammon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. You know, Ammon had interest in his stepsister Tamar. But the truth is, if he had a right friend, not Jonadab, my parents we are Jonadab. If he had a right friend, when he told Jonadab what his intention was, Jonadab looked and said, oh, you're looking stressed, can you just talk you to are me? Sick. You what are sick, happening? what's happening? And by the time he told Jonadab, Jonadab was the one that gave him, plotted out how he was going to achieve his, what he was thinking about Tamar. So imagine if he had somebody good, because you can have a negative thought, but when you meet with someone who has a positive mindset, the person will be able to influence you. And people you. who can correct you, yes. people who can tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Some of you, they correct you in church, you carry your feet. When you come to church, the next one, good morning, good afternoon. You're angry because they corrected you. Yeah. This guy lost his throne, oh. he could have been a king. Yes. He was in the priestly nail age. Yes. He lost it because of his friend. His friend told him, what is there now? The Bible said, this his friend was so crafty. Was so crafty. There are people around us, they are crafty men. They come, they are dancing, playing around us. But they see your star. They wish you are as low as they are. So they come, they come and give you, yeah, you go, on, go and sleep with her. What is there? This is how you should do it. And he did it and he slept with his stepsister. Two years after, Absalom killed him. Yes. When Absalom killed him and the report went to David, 
a wrong report went to David that all his sons has been killed. It was the same Abnon, the one who encouraged him that to be Jonadab, that to be right reports. I went to go and tell David, I said, ah, they killed him because he slept with his stepsister. That was that they, he didn't tell David that I was the one that told him. But he's dead. The person that encouraged him to go into such vices is alive. Giving the reports, telling his story. Who is advising you? Who is your company? See, I better stay among people who tell me the truth than going to look for people who are flattery. Ah! You are a conqueror. You may say you don't sleep with three girls. Ah! My brother, you, you bad. You're happy. But this train now with a conquer guest. <laughs> so the people are praising you. They will soon tell your story. They will say, there was a boy in these streets. He was a conqueror. But now he has been conquered. May that not be your testimony in the name of Jesus. And finally, I want to encourage every one of you that you should abide in God. John chapter 40, 51 verse 4 said, Abide in me. 15 verse 4. And I in you as the branch cannot bear fruits of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless what? You abide in me. God is calling every one of us to righteousness, to purity, to holiness. He's calling every one of us to abide in him. The reason why he's saying that you should abide is such that your life will be fruitful. That is why this call is important. Like when we're preparing for this meeting, God told us, he said, I want to raise generals, I want to raise priests, I want to raise warriors from this place. He said, I want to give crown to men. He said, I want to give spiritual promotion. I want to change rank of men. But you see, that can only be possible if you are bad. You are soaked in him. You are lost in him. If you have come to the point where you have told yourself that if I perish, I perish. People come to tell you, ah, don't you know that you are 30 years old? So you don't even have a boyfriend. But you have come to the point where you have told your maker, even if I do not marry in this life, I will still say Jesus is Lord. Those are men. That want to abide. Men who use their mouth for prayers rather than looking for who to kiss. Those are men that abide. That their passion is on the world. Their passion is not on a boy. That every time they think they are not thinking of a maker, they are not thinking of Juliet. Their goal is Jesus. We have many of them in the Bible. Scripture told us that whilst they were persecuting the disciples, guess what? The Bible says when they go to their camp, there was rejoicing. They were rejoicing because they were being persecuted. But we have a generation of people, they don't want to suffer for this God. They've taught us wrongly that the best form of Christianity to show that you are a success in Christianity is the car you drive, is the money you have, is the suit you wear. No. Jesus is looking for men who can pay the price who are sacrificial men that will say if I perish I perish they look at you and say this one loves pray too much ah, what is wrong with her people went on for what but these people they know that they are sold out their life is it in Christ men who have taken Christianity as not democracy men who have taken Christianity as kingdom that Jesus is the Lord of my life the Lord of my life means that I don't have an opinion it's what God says I should do that is what I will do it's not what friends are saying it is what God says I will do that is what I will do like Esther said if I perish I perish you want to be among the warriors you must be ready to lay your life lay your life on the altar you 
want to be among the people that God will use in this end time, you must be ready to lay your life on the altar and say, God, use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. And whilst you are making that prayer, you begin to think of everything that you have lost. You begin to think of all the relationship, all the opportunities you had. There are people that celebrated you, but yet, in your secret, you know you are losing real hard. All for the name of your maker. If you abide in me and I in you. If you abide in me and I in you. That is the way your life can be fruitful. Men who will never compromise. I go and do yahoo yahoo. They say it's the shortcut. Men that will say, I wait on my maker. I wait on my maker. Somebody want to pray this morning and say, God, make, make me worthy. Life kingdom worthy. Make my life kingdom worthy. Make my life kingdom worthy. I want to hear you pray. It's between you and your maker this morning. It's between you and your maker this morning. There is a call to surrender. There is a call to surrender this morning. There is a call. Jesus is saying, can we still find faithful men? Can we still find faithful women? Can we still find in this generation? There is a call. There is a call. There is a call. There's an outcry. Make it no prayer. Father, spend my life. Hey, I surrender to you totally. It's not my will, but your will be done. If you can, can you be upstanding? It is not a time to be cold in prayers. Begin to take a right position where you are not distracted. Why you are still praying in your heart? If you can hear me, why pastor was preaching, I 
I think it seems like our message really aligned when I came into the hall. My pastor was preaching, he was giving an example of a God's general, Kitrikuma. Let me tell you how the devil tries to mess up destinies. As anointed as she was, firebrand as she was, the Bible. I like Bible. Anytime she enters a meeting, from the stories that we read, people who their bones are disjointed, it cracks back to normal. That was the kind of fire she had. There was raw fire on her life. And the devil was looking for a way to bring this woman down. And he still went through a man, a pastor, Boro Hallen, who had just divorced his wife. The devil packaged this man and brought this man to Ketrikuma. Ketrikuma, with all the anointing for God herself. At every time from her own encounter, she knew she was doing the wrong thing, but she was chained. She knew, she knew at every time she would tell people, this man is not right for me, but she was chained. Because of the shame and she, the reproach, she went over and had a secret marriage and married that man. They said two weeks after she came out public to tell the world that she had gotten married. Why she was telling them, again, she said, I knew I made a mistake. But emotions. Apostle Paul said, fight your flesh. See, kill it, kill it, kill it. For the next 10 years of her ministry, nobody heard of Ketrikuman again. Nobody heard of the fire brand again. Nobody. Because she went out from the will of God. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some of you, your cry is a cry to return to that first love. That is your cry today. You know how your life had been, but emotions. You know that there was a great call upon your life, but emotions. Your cry is a cry back to that first love. I want to hear you pray. I want to hear you pray. I begin to cry to God and say, Father, restore back to me the joy of my salvation. Restore and renew a right spirit within me. It is a cry for restoration. Blessed and a pure in that. For they shall see God. If you want to see God, begin to cry. Father, restore, 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 restore. I don't want to be a mockery in my generation. I don't want to lose it in my generation. Begin to cry. Begin to cry to God.
under the sound of my voice one of you while you were taking this prayer you began to cry from your heart knowing well that God has called you to be an intercessor to be an intercessor to be an intercessor but that fire is no longer there again as we began to pray the angel of the Lord is crowning you now with a fresh oil with a fresh oil with a fresh oil with a fresh oil only ghost touch that person now with a fresh oil with a fresh oil with a fresh oil with a fresh oil it's coming strong on you it's coming strong on you it's coming strong on you wherever they are just bring them out now bring them out with a strong oil it's a strange anointing it's a strange anointing. It's coming upon you. It's coming upon you. Please, oh brother, you're the brother that lost. Please, oh brother, you're the brother that got 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 Strong and 
Some of you, it is as you are going on, you will start speaking to the Holy Ghost. That word God has put in your mouth, don't stop praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Before we pray for everybody, there is a leading in our spirit. My wife confirmed this word to pray for body bearer. Scripture calls it the ministry of help. The ministry of help. Men who are carrying and who want to, who are willing to carry the body of this ministry. We have a lot of chapters everywhere. There are people within those chapters that are carrying the work. And God says, I want to release a supernatural grace that we make work easy. Listen now. I hope you know people don't give to the work because they have money. They give because there's an activation of an anointing. They give because there's an, an, an activation of an anointing. God by himself want to anoint body bearers. Men that will say, I want to enlist myself to this work. I have never really been committed to God's work. I have been playing. But today, I want to commit myself. I have decided to be a part of those that will carry the body of this vision. I want to lift up the hands of the man of God. Wherever you are, just run out. There's an anointing for you. There's an anointing for you. There's an anointing that as you leave this camp meeting, you are going to chase your thousands at your various churches. At your various churches. It's a fresh anointing and equipping that want to fall upon your life. I want to carry the vision of this house and say pastor as long as I am a member of this church this vision will not fail if it's for soul winning we'll be there if it is for giving we'll be there if it is for the work we want to send our heart to this assignment Holy Spirit begin to anoint them Begin to annoy them. I see God anointing music ministers, music ministers, music ministers. I see God anointing music ministers. I see God anointing music ministers. You will not sing from the flesh anymore. You will begin to sing spirit, 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 Holy Ghost.
anyone under the sound of our voice that is oppressed of the devil. We break that yoke now in Jesus' name. We break that yoke now in Jesus' name. We break that yoke now in Jesus' name. There is somebody under the sound of my voice. I see God removing a garment. It's a garment of reproach. He's taking it from your life. He's taking it from your life. A garment of reproach. The reproach that has been following your family. I see God stopping it in your time. He's taking that reproach. Father now. Father now. Begin to go to those families now. Begin to go to those families now. And begin to separate your children now. Separate them. 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 Separate them, separate them, separate them, separate them. like there's a form of darkness you can't explain where is that person where is that person we want to pray for you that yoke will be broken where is that person where is that person where is that person I want to pray for that person
of premature death. Amen. You spirit of premature death, roving around families in this place. We arrest you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. These ones are marked in the name of Jesus. Amen. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Amen. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. Amen. No weapon. Amen. No weapon. Amen. This person I'm praying for, your father is currently sick. Your dad is currently sick. Your dad is currently sick. Your dad is currently sick. I see God going to your family to break that yoke of premature death. I see God going to your family to break that yoke of premature death. That sickness is not unto death. He will live to eat the fruit of his labor. Your father will live to eat the fruit of his labor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Tazibra Kandadesh Libra Tayada you have done and I hear that this is just the beginning when you go back please um, do, for those that are on the floor please don't disturb them wherever you are just be silent wherever you are please just lift up your hands everyone what you have received you will burn from this much more than you can ever imagine in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for restoration of altars. We thank you for the fire that you have ignited upon altars today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for restoration. Thank you for revival. Thank you for gifts that you have shared amongst men. Thank you for burden bearers in this ministry. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the strength that was released upon you through the anointing that you thank received. You, Jesus. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. And indeed, in this our generation, we were born and we will not be small. We will not be few. We will be many. There will be voices on this, in this generation in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For you shine forth forever. And ever in Jesus' name we have prayed. Somebody shout a living amen. amen. Somebody shout a living amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody celebrate your victory. Hallelujah. 